Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Ag Career Start Information Night for uni students. Um, so this presentation is going to focus specifically on how Ag Career Start can work as an industry experience program for people who are either currently at university or about to finish university studies. So if that's not you, not quite sure this is the webinar for you, but if it is, stick around. We've got some great stuff. First and foremost, um, I would like to thank you all for joining us. And um, just I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land from which we're all calling in from today um, and pay our respects to their culture as first farmers in this country um, and to leaders past, present and emerging. Let's fire away. So first of all, I would like to introduce you to the team. So uh, my name is Kayla Evans and I am the project manager for Ag Career Start. I am based in Canberra with the National Farmers Federation. Um, this program is run by the National Farmers Federation and funded by the Commonwealth Government of Australia, the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Uh, I'm also joined by Stephanie Blake, who is our Community Engagement Officer with Ag Career Start. Steph is based in Warrnambool in Victoria. And we also have Chloe Dutschke, who is our Training and Career Development Officer, who is on a station in the Hay Plains in New South Wales. So um, spread far and wide, we work remotely, but it allows us to cover um, a lot of country. All right, uh, and all of these roles will make much more sense as we go throughout this presentation. So we'll get into the nuts and bolts of uh, Ag Career Start now. So hopefully by now you've heard a little bit about Ag Career Start. As I mentioned, it is a federally funded gap year program uh, run by the National Farmers Federation in conjunction with our delivery partners throughout industry. And we have quite a number of those. Uh, at its core, it's a 10 to 12 month gap year program and now don't be deterred by the term gap year program because it actually has high applicability for uni students in particular. Think about it more as a 10 to 12 month farm placement uh, in paid farm work which might be great for you particularly if you are about to step out the doors of university, about to graduate um, and you're looking for your first bit of farm experience. I know so many of you uh, undertaking agriculture um, with no background in ag, which is so fantastic. Uh, and this provides you just a bit of contextualization, perhaps um, a bit of a chance to get to know and understand what farmers are after and the kind of challenges that they face on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you might also be looking for a bit of industry credibility for when you're out and about talking to farmers. So you have that experience under your belt. So it's for anyone under the age of 25 looking to start your career in agriculture. So I'm guessing if you're either studying agriculture or a related course, um, that that's you. So we'll go much greater detail into all the these parts of the program, but to, at a very high level, we match you with a host farmer based on your skills and your interests. So what are your long-term career goals? We um, provide you an opportunity to work and earn money for 10 to 12 months. You will receive training, mentoring and, the, and support to complete upskilling courses. You will also enjoy access to industry events and a network of industry members and peers through the program as well. And we'll talk about all of that in much greater detail throughout the presentation. So we'll jump forward. Thanks, Steph. So having a look at how the program works, this is a top down view. So pre-farm, we get involved with uh, student engagement, so getting to know you guys. We also get involved with farm engagement, getting to know our host farmers. And then we also uh, do all of our recruitment and screening. So all of our farmers go through a screening process before they can be allocated a participant. So that's to ensure that we're working with farmers who are first and foremost, best practice in all areas, uh, but just that they're great human beings who want to mentor someone like you uh, who's starting out in your career. Then we get you ready to go to farm for so many of our participants. It's the first time that they'll actually ever step foot uh, on the farm. So we prepare you with some safety training. Uh, we also prepare you with a farm induction. So 
If you've never been on a farm before, rest assured, we get you as well equipped as we can before you head out there. And then we help you access any relocation and accommodation schemes um, that might be available. There have been some federally funded uh, programs that our participants this year have had access to. So we'll help you out there. Then we obviously get all the employment side of things organized for you. So you will be employed 10 to 12 months full time with a single employer. So unlike other grad programs, you don't move around farms. Um, you are employed in one location for the full duration of your uh, quote unquote gap year program. Then uh, Steph will have some fun things organised for you in the engagement space throughout your program. And then we also are ringing you all the time, sending you emails, texting all the time, making sure that you're healthy, you're safe and you're enjoying your farm experience. That's really important to us. So we're really there to provide a supportive environment for you so that you again have that confidence to go onto farm and just give it your best shot. And then at the end, we've got some great stuff going on uh, in the, the retention space beyond the life of the program. So we're here to give you career advice and a bunch of other things, which Chloe will talk about in much greater detail. We have an alumni program. We can help you access other employment, that sort of things. But we will talk about that a little bit later on. And next slide. <laughs> Computer's very slow. <clears throat> so we wanted to show you some of our farm hosts that we work with. I mentioned before that our farm hosts are best of the best. And uh, these are just three examples of our host farmers. We've got very many, many across many different industries. So starting with Gavin on the left. So Gavin is a, uh, a generational farmer. So he's family farmer uh, in Griffith in New South Wales and Griffith uh, is quite a diverse area actually. So there's uh, quite a lot of cotton, but there's also horticulture, viticulture, uh, and a bunch of other things going on in that area. But Gavin specifically is a cotton, uh, cotton and grain farmer, but primarily cotton. And he's only on about 2,000 acres there, but they actually have a contract farming business, which our current participant who's on Gavin's farm uh, gets involved in the contract business as well. So Gavin travels up and down the East Coast um, harvesting or picking cotton and other grains. Um, and then he also has a farm data business as well. So um, Julian, the participant who's on that farm, is involved with the farm data side of things as well. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Julian in a second. Then we've got Bruce up in the Northern Territory, who I think is uh, hosting our, all of our ideal gap year programs, which is on Tipperary Station, which is a fully functioning cattle station in the Northern Territory. But Bruce also um, has what he calls their farming operation, which is their lemon and cotton operation up in the Northern Territory as well. And actually Bruce just last week won the Innovator of the Year Award at the Cotton Australia Conference. Um, so one of the best cotton growers in the country um, is having participants through our program. And our participant Lucy, who's up there this year, you'll hear a bit more about her in a moment as well. But Tipperary is massive, uh, just over 200,000 hectares. It's just over two hours south of Darwin. Um, and at any one time, there's about 50 employees who work on that farm. So pretty cool. And uh, again, we'll talk about Lucy a little bit later on, but uh, she is actually doing her placement in a rangelands and conservation role. Um, so she's not working in the cattle side of the business, which I think is fantastic. So I'll tell you more about that in a second. And then we've got Mandy, who is a lovely generational dairy farmer. Um, so uh, Mandy's got a fantastic family of daughters uh, who all work in and around the dairy farm together. And they're based in Kai Valley in Victoria, which is about two hours north of Melbourne. And they milk about 1,200 cows a day, which is quite large. Steph will nod because she's from the dairy industry. Um, so quite a large operation. Um, and they're actually in the process of expanding to, they want to get to 5,000 milking cows, which is just insane. <clears throat> and the great thing about um, this particular placement on Mandy's farm, um, we've got a participant there this year, is she's looking for people to employ long-term. So people who go to her farm placement um, people who go on to uh, Mandy's farm placement are ultimately 
people that she wants to keep long term, which I just think is fantastic. So if dairy is for you um, and you want to have a go in the dairy industry, um, Mandy would be a fantastic farmer to work for. Um, and I know her participant, Benjamin, is very much intending to stay there long term. So we will jump to the next slide, Steph. So that was just three examples of some of our farm placements, but this is a much broader look at what our participants are up to this year. So we've got a participant in every state and territory in the country, except for the ACT, unsurprisingly, I don't think, but doing things from, so our largest industry that's represented in our cohort is grains. So we've got about 12 placements in grains this year. We've got a number of livestock placements, horticultural placements, we've got dairy placements, uh, what am I forgetting, cotton, lots and lots of different industries. And if you've got a specific industry that you're interested in, uh, please do chat to us because we can go out and source a placement for you even if we don't have a host farmer signed up to the program in that specific industry. So I'm just going to show you um, a, a bit more about those two participants I mentioned before. <clears throat> so the first of uh, which is Julian. So Julian is actually doing a career start as a mid degree break. So like so many of you, um, when he started university, uh, it's all been online, which has just not been the experience that he wanted. He hasn't had the chance to get to meet many people. And because of that, he was just looking to take a break, travel the country, see a bit of uh, see a part of the world he hasn't seen before. But beyond that, also start to equip himself with knowledge outside of the classroom. Julian speaks often about how, you know, you can learn as much as you want from a book, but until you go out into the farm and get some real life experience on a farm, it's it's a really different thing. So Julian is on Gavin's farm, who we showed you before, and Julian's getting involved with farm data, he's getting involved with machinery operations, he's getting involved with running the contracting business. So Julian spends quite a bit of his farm placement uh, in the office, um, learning about the management of a farm business and a contracting business. So he's really loving that. Julian's long-term goal is actually not to end up on farm, he wants to work in research. So um, that farm data side of things, the contracts side of thing, contracting side of things, the business management is all really attractive to him and what he wants to do long term. Um, and he's actually at ANU in Canberra, or he will be. He's well, he's just taken a break, so he's going to go back there and he's doing um, his degree in agricultural innovation, which is pretty cool. And then Lucy, who we chatted about before. She's up on Tipperary Station and she is working in the rangelands and conservation role on Tipperary Station. So Tipperary is very unique um, in cattle station land in that they have that conservation land management role. Um, so this, this placement has been a perfect fit for Lucy and um, Lucy really, we got to know Lucy really well through the application process. And so in getting to know her well, we sort of were able to align what her skills and her long-term career goals were with the placement on Tipperary Station. So when you apply to the program, please tell us um, as much about what you want to do long-term as you can, because that allows us to make the best match for you. So Lucy is off to uni next year. I think she's going to James Cook. I could be wrong, but she's actually off to do environmental science. So um, again, using the gap year program to really equip herself for what's going to happen at university next year and life beyond uni as well. And now I'm going to throw over to my lovely team who are going to tell you all about um, the training and welfare components as well as the application process. Thanks, Kayla. Um, so one of the really great things about our program is that we're in constant uh, communication with all of our participants. So when you apply to the Ag Career Start program, you'll talk to Chloe or myself and we'll really support you through the application process. So as Kayla mentioned, if there are specific things that you're looking for in an on-farm gap year, for example, you're really interested in conservation like the participant Lucy, 
we talk to you about that and we find a farm who is implementing what you're after. When you're on farm, we're always a phone call away. So you're never ever alone. If you have any questions or concerns and you don't feel comfortable talking to your farmer host about them, you can just pick up the phone and chat to, to us. We're here to help and we're really, we really want to be there to support your development on farm and your move to farm. And that's probably where we're quite unique and probably different to just going out and sourcing a job on your own with a station. For example, you have that support from us and we can we can help if anything, if you need any assistance along the way. As part of the program, we also connect you to a cohort of peers who are also doing the gap year. So this year we've connected all of our Ag Career Start participants with each other via online Facebook groups and WhatsApp. And so they're quite active there. So they use the Facebook groups to share stories of what they've been doing on farm, to share photos, to talk about how one cotton farm might be doing something to another participant's cotton farm. And it, it's really nice to see that camaraderie happening. Uh, another part of the, the program that we think is really exciting is the fact that every participant gets a uh, an industry engagement budget. And this allows them to attend the industry events and really get exposed to what the industry is like. So for example, this year participants were able to spend their money going to conferences, field days, events like Grain Growers Innovation Generation. Uh, we've had participants go to the, the one going to the Landcare conference this week. We've got participants going to a beef conference in Brisbane in a couple of months. Participants went to Hort Connections, literally whatever that looks like for you, uh, we can make that happen. And all of your transport accommodation, it's all paid for by the program, which is really exciting. So as Steph and Kayla mentioned, um, all participants get access to a training grant for you to spend throughout your gap year. So that means we really want to upskill yourself. So when you start on farm, uh, you I'll sit down and develop a training plan with you. So we send out a survey and it just gauges where your areas of interest are. Maybe it's something that you studied at university, say genetics, nutrition, um, animal welfare, Whatever it might be, um, we ask you to list a few things that you're interested in. And then through that training plan, we'll try and um, formulate a few ideas that you might like to use the money towards. So uh, some of the on-farm practical um, uh, training that you might do in might include a forklift ticket. Maybe you want to do a low-stress uh, stock handling course. Uh, you could do a chemical handling certificate. Maybe it's a first aid. The second part of that is that maybe because you've already come out of a uni degree, you already have some of those skills that you would have learned in your practicals and you would have had the theoretical knowledge from your uni degree. So maybe your training plan looks more towards um, developing business skills. Maybe it's more of doing personal development and professional development in leadership courses, in communication skills, in those soft skills that employers are looking for. So we can definitely tailor uh, your training towards that. At the end of uh, the placement, at the end of the 10 to 12 months, um, we'll work together and decide what your next move might be. So you may look for long-term employment on that farm and you could either stay there again. You may look to do something different now and potentially look at, uh, say, an ag a graduate agronomy role, having done a year on farm now and having your uni degree behind you. Um, these are things that we can talk to uh each other about and we can work to um, helping you reach that goal. So as I mentioned, towards the end of your placement, um, myself and Steph will be in contact with you about pathways after the program. So that could include uh, having conversations with your farmer saying that you would like to stay on for another year and potentially your host farmer may be able to host you again. That means that you move out of the Ag Career Start program, but that um, 
that the employer still employs you. Um, you may choose to uh, try a different industry and we can help you set up for that. And you could also potentially do some casual work there if you needed, uh, if you were looking at potentially going on to do um, maybe a PhD, et cetera, and just looking for some work on the sideline. You may also um, like to look at other um, potential jobs. So like we talked about graduate programs and myself and Steph are here to support you with that, um, whether that's updating your resume, whether that's um, helping write a cover letter or an application, um, we're here to help you with that. So what it, whatever it is you need, just reiterating that Steph and I are here to help. And that's the unique part of the Ag Career Start program is that you have that support there. At the end of the program, you'll also become part of our alumni and we want to connect you with others who have completed the pro program and therefore there would be some networking opportunities. You'll also be connected with some of the N National Farmers Federation uh, networks and contacts if you so wish and we can help facilitate some of those conversations. So now hopefully you're really excited to commence your on-farm gap year next year. So now we'll talk through how the program works, how you apply and what the application timeframes look like. So um, when you apply, you apply online through our website. So our website is just agcareerstart.com and on the website you'll be given information as to what you'll need when you apply. When you apply, you get to pick what industry that you would like to go into and what location you'd like to go to. So when we talk about location, we're talking about how far from home you're willing to move. And you'll have a choice between staying as close as possible to where you currently live to going anywhere around Australia. In terms of industry, you can pick from, like Kayla said, so many different industries. We have people on traditional cattle farms, dairy farms. We have people on horticultural farms. We have forestry opportunities, aquaculture, vertical farms in Sydney CBD. The list really is quite, quite endless. So when you pick your location and your industry preference and submit your application, we find a farmer who who is suitable for you to go to. So someone in the industry you've chosen and in the location that you're happy to go to. When there's been a farm match, we send you information on that farmer and assuming that you are happy to meet, you then proceed to an interview with the farmer. During the interview, that's your chance to, to chat all things uh, farm next year. So for example, it's your time to ask about what a day looks like on the farm, what, what the accommodation situation is on farm, how much are we getting paid, who else is working on the farm, all of those questions. Uh, it's more of a chance to, it's them interviewing you, but also you interviewing them. Assuming the interview goes well, the farmer will then if, issue a job offer for you. If you're happy, you'll then accept that and get an employment contract. When you have a contract uh, and you've signed it, you'll then start working out a start date. So start dates for next year's intake will be between January and March, and you will negotiate that with your farmer. So before going out on farm, you complete our online farm safety training, which Chloe will talk about in a bit more detail later on. Uh, then you will arrive on farm and throughout your year, as we've just uh, discussed, you'll get ongoing training opportunities, development and networking opportunities. So that's your chance to, like I said before, in the engagement piece, you'll have opportunities to attend conferences and field days of your choice and to undertake training of your choice. So um, start thinking about what you might like to do. So applications for the 2023 intake opened on the 12th of July and will close on the 18th of October this year. So when you apply, you um, um, what I'm saying. So they'll close on the 18th of October. So from that point, so between October and December, we will start matching based on what you have written in your application in terms of your industry preferences and location preferences. We will start the process of matching you with a suitable farm. You will find out between October and December, but most likely November, early December about the farm you've been matched with and have the opportunity to interview with that farmer to then start on farm from January, 2023. 
Um, I just want to reiterate here that when we screen participants, we don't screen based on experience. So if you don't have any previous farming or agricultural experience, that is totally fine. What our farmers are looking for are people who are motivated and passionate to try something new. So when you apply, uh, and we'll talk about what you need in a moment, you really just want to let that shine through that you're passionate, you want to try something new. And yeah, that's that's the main thing that our farmers are looking for. So don't feel worried if you don't have any farming experience. The other thing to think about, and we'll go through it in the next slide, but um, in your application, anything that you, any specifics that you're really looking for on a farm. So for example, if during your degree, you've got a real interest in sustainability, just letting that letting us know that in your application so that we can find someone suitable to match you with. So what do you need to apply to the Ag Careers uh, Start program? So as Steph mentioned, you apply directly online through the Ag Careers Start website. So if you head to our website, agcareerstart.com, um, you'll find the apply for 2023 tab, click on that and go through uh, the list for participants that you'll need to develop. So that will include a 500 word statement of intent or a five minute video, which explains why you wanna be a part of the Ag Career Start program and why you wanna have a gap year in agriculture or why you wanna uh, either you finish university and wanna take a year on farm to learn more skills or you're taking a mid year break. And we just really wanna know, and as Steph has reiterated, just making sure that you tell us what you're interested in, why you want to be on farm, what it is that you want to learn, what it is that you want to get out of it. And maybe that includes career goals, including being an agronomist, being a nutritionist, uh, etc. You also need to pre prepare an up-to-date resume. So we want to make sure that's got all your key skills on there and uh, think about skills that are transfer transferable. As Steph mentioned, you don't need to have any prior experience in agriculture. Um, if you've got transferable skills like communication skills, um, you're, you're a good hard worker, et cetera, we want to see those come through on your resume. We also want you to have um, your most up-to-date job uh, history on there as well and uh, your schooling. So make sure you put on there if you have uh, either finished your university, deg university degree, what it was, what maybe some subjects that you studied, et cetera. And then we also need you to find a referee who can provide a written character reference. So as part of the application process, we send you a template that you can download and send to your referee. So a referee can't be anyone who's related to you. So maybe asking a, a uni lecturer, maybe it's an old school teacher, maybe it's a sports coach. A referee cannot be someone who's related to you. And if you don't um, provide a reference who is um, applicable, then it may delay your pro your application getting through. So just making sure that you've got those three up to date, ready to go. So that 500 word written statement of intent or five minute video, an up to date resume, and then find a referee who's willing to vouch for you and provide that written character reference. So once you've applied, and as Steph mentioned, the um, the Ag Career Start process earlier, um, you'll have your start date. And then uh, before you go on farm, you'll obviously be offered a position in the program. Uh, before you head out on farm, you complete an online induction through the Farm Safe website. So it's um, talking about all the safety procedures, uh, what to do in, a, in an unsafe environment, who to talk to, um, what kind of things you may come up against, um, who's responsible for what. And it just outlines uh, some of those farm safety uh, procedures that potentially um, you may not have seen before. So that's before you arrive on farm. Um, as Kayla mentioned earlier, there may be financial support schemes out there and um, Ag Career Start uh, will help you find them if they are available at the time. And then once you've moved through that, there'll be some onboarding documentation to read that will deliver to you via email. And in those first two weeks on farm, uh, the farmer will sit down with you and complete an on-farm induction, which is also um, templated by FarmSafe. So it's basically making sure that you're aware of the um, safety procedures, the PPE, et cetera, to use some of the machinery in some of the different uh, work um, jobs that you'll be doing. So uh, the farmer will do that with you in those first two weeks on farm.
Um, so I think that concludes the formal part of our presentation. So these are just some commonly asked questions from this year's intake. So we'll just run through them. So a few of our participants who applied to be on farm this year didn't have driver's licenses. And while you can go out on farm without a driver's license, it's probably not ideal. So it's something to start thinking of. So most of our farms are geographically isolated and not near public transport. So if you want to leave the farm, it makes it very hard if you don't have your own vehicle in many cases or a driver's license. If you are traveling from, for example, Sydney to WA, you might negotiate with the farmer to drive one of their farm vehicles while you're there so you don't have to drive over. And that's something that you can negotiate with the farmer during the interview. So um, accommodation and meals, that will be very farm dependent as well. When you apply to the program, you will be able to select whether you're willing to look for your own accommodation or whether you would like the farmer to have accommodation on farm. So farms will be very different in that regard. Some farmers will have accommodation on farm and others won't. What we ask of our farmers is that if they don't have accommodation on farm, we ask that they help find you accommodation because we understand that in many cases you're moving to live on the farm and it's really hard to go look at rental accommodation if you're not around so they might know a neighbor who's got a spare room or they might have a, a jaco hut or a donger as they call them on site or somewhere else but again that's something to chat about during the interview stage uh, in terms of what you'll earn on farm our ag career start gap here is a paid gap year and the pay rates really do differ between farms and industries. So it will all be determined by the applicable award rate. So all of our farmers are required to pay at or above award level wages, and that will depend on the role on offer, your experience and the farm type. If you get to the farm and you don't like it, we're there to help. So um, that, Ag Career Start is a really supportive program, so you're never left on your own. If you get out to farm, you try it for a few weeks and it's not for you, please pick up the phone and talk to us. We're more than happy to chat to the farmer. If, if there's something that you think could be changed to make your experience better, we're more than happy to discuss that with you. But yeah, if, if it's not for you, that farm will also more than happy to work through what you would like to do. And if that's a different farm placement, we can help in that regard as well. Time off will change depending on all farms. So uh, some farms will operate a nine to five kind of, or I should say a weekday system where you get weekends off. Others won't. Others might have you work nine days and then get three off. It, it's very farm dependent. We have had farmers on the program this year who are very happy to negotiate time off. So for example, uh, a participant that comes to mind moved a very long way away from her family into state and she now banks up her hours to get more time off. So these are things that you can discuss with your host farmer at the time. And as we said before, the best chance of getting into the program is being motivated and passionate and letting that shine through on your application. So as part of your application, like Chloe discussed, you can either submit a five minute video or a statement of why you want to be on the program. And that's really your chance just to explain why you want to go out on farm and why you're the best person for that farmer and why they should pick you. Uh, I think, Chloe, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think we just really want to reiterate to you that this is a really well supported program. It's a government funded program and through that you do get your training bursary. So it's really trying to upskill you for the future. Um, so that's where we work with you um, to, like we said, if it's professional development, if it's designing a website for a potential um, business idea you have, if it's learning a communication style, if it's a per personality testing, etc. We want to be there to support you. And as Steph mentioned, you've got that industry engagement fund, which is quite unique to this program. So you can attend some of those industry uh, conferences and it's all paid for by the program, your accommodation, your travel and your ticket. So it's really trying to embed you in industry and what transferring those uh, theoretical knowledge that you learned at university into a wider world. So at some of the conferences, they may focus on uh, research and you may have learned about that in your degree and you can broaden that at the conferences. So we just want to make sure that you write down all those things in your application as well, really 
put in what you want to get out of the program and where you would like to go and how we can help you get there. Um, yeah, this program is about uh, helping young people into a career pathway in agriculture. Um, and yeah, we just want to be there to support you guys as much as we can. Yeah, and I think I'll just add that it's a fantastic way if, you've, if you're coming out of your degree and you don't have uh, on-farm experience or a background in agriculture, even if you're not interested in farming longer term, it's a fantastic way to go out on farm and see why farmers do things, how farmers do things, and the, the thought process behind why. That's especially important, I think, if you're going into a nutrition career or an agronomy career. It's just very useful background information to have.